Okay, so here's something new about V-Ray for Cinema 4D. And I would like to show you something I've done for you and for me, of course. This is a light setup with HDRI. As you might know, image-based lighting is a very comfortable and amazingly easy technique to light a scene. So I found out that uh, dealing with V-Ray parameters uh, throughout the scene is can be rather annoying because you have to click here and there and, and find the right tabs and so on and have to concentrate very much. So I built you a, a set of um, parameters just concentrating on the very important issues of the light. So um, as you can see in my um, render talk block there is a file you can download and you can put it just into your library files and I would like to show you where this is when you check edit preferences there is a, a small button uh, saying open preferences folder and when you get there you can just um, navigate through the to the library folder and there is the browser and in the browser there you can uh, just copy this uh, decompressed file called lib4d Okay, so this is called <coughs> RT, VRA for Cinema 4D Scene Kit. Oh no, um, sorry, it's Render Talks C4D Scene Files. This should be it, it's 18 and something megabytes uh, in size. Okay, so when you've done this and open Cinema 4D, <coughs> you'll find in the content browser just somewhere uh, a folder under the presets. Uh, presets are to be reached here, as you might know. And there is this folder called RenderTalk C4D Scene Files. And when you open this, there is another folder, a subfolder RT Scene, V-Ray HDRI, HDRI, sorry. When you double click this, you find the scene file and a text folder and a preview folder. So this is not very important. This is, this is just for having a nice image. And when you double click this, um, a whole scene opens up and it's uh, a V-Ray scene. It is um, consisting of V-Ray materials, V-Ray tags, and uh, stuff like that, V-Ray camera. And it's also having V-Ray render parameters. As you can see, <coughs> we've got the V-Ray bridge activated and we've got indirect illumination, point and shoot mode. DMC sampler is just uh, by default. Anti-aliasing is subdivision in uh, 100, threshold 0 0.02. So this is rather common. Color mapping is set to gamma 2.2 and linear workflow has been activated. So this is all what you get when you open the scene, so you don't have to bother with this. I just wanted to show you so you know somehow what you're dealing with. So let's have a look at some things. I did not only do the HDRI setup, but also a sort of camera. As you might see, as you will see when you open the scene, there is a camera installed and it's activated. And now when you navigate, you're just scrolling around and moving around this scene center. So this is rather comfortable when moving around in an architectural scene. You have a point in the middle of the scene or in the middle of your building and you want just to move around this midpoint. You don't have to you don't want to, you know, move around somewhere here and there and stuff like that, but just around your building, around your house and uh, interiors. And as you might see, there is a camera target and you can move this camera target, so your camera is moving too. Oh, I have to take the right um, tool. So your camera will move. Let's um, take this one, sorry. Uh, when you move this target, you see that your camera center where it is all aligned to is moving to. Okay, so this is just um, what I did. Um, it's just in the middle of the scene, in the middle of this cube. So all the camera does is moving around this cube. So um, in case you need something like this, you just can copy this. This is a V-Ray camera, but this has nothing to do with this alignment. This is just a default V-Ray camera, daylight, white balance, uh, film ISO 100 f-stop 8 and so on. This is just what you get when you attach su uh, such a V-Ray tag to this camera. And this is the expression caring for the, you know, keeping the same height as the camera target so the verticals are ever, ever, ever perpendicular to the floor. So never you will get these ugly perspectives with, uh, you know, um, 
verticals going here and there and, and stuff like that. They're just perpendicular, so they keep perpendicular just by moving the camera target in the same height as the camera via this Expresso connection. Okay, so I don't want to bore you with this. Let's get back to the scene. Um, we've had some standard perspectives. Okay, so now when I hit render, and I'm doing this in the picture viewer always, most most of the time, because you know you can compare all those renderings and I hit Shift R, and it's being rendered in the picture viewer. Okay, so this is showing a very simple scene, and you see a sky background, and you see a very simple scene. It's called dummy scene, so this is just a floor, an infinite horizontal plane, and a cube on it. So just you, you know, you get an impression how this all works, and in case you have a real own scene, you can just can throw away this dummy scene and put in your own stuff. So this is actually um, done by default. It's a blue sky with white, white clouds, and the floor looks somehow bluish too. So how is this done? Normally, what you would do, you have a an area light. Which you can see here, it's an area light and it's got a V ray tag attached to it. And this V ray tag says area light 2. It's got an intensity and it's got enabled shadows checked. And then again, in the area light tab, you have area type dome. And as you can see, we use a texture, and this texture is inside this filter. And when you click on this, you see that this is an HDRI. In sRGB color profile. So this is what we need basically to light our scene and the filter is only for reasons of you know correcting hue, saturation, contrast, stuff like that so most of the time the picture is not ideal for lighting so you just have to you, you have some some small things to you know tune it. Okay so this is uh, what you do when you um, want to light your scene via an HDRI image and you get shadows and you can turn this image but you can't turn this inside this area light tab you have to go back to the original light settings of Cinema 4D and there you can you know change the arch H coordinates in order to move around the sky and having the light coming from another direction and thus another shadow cast shadow too. Okay, this is one thing. And as you might have seen already, there was this small invisible option checked. So the HDRI image is not caring for the background image. It's just caring for the light entering the scene. So um, this was done because, you know, I would always want to keep those things separately. Having a background image and having something to light the scene, you can treat the things you know, differently, you can give it a little bit more saturation or less saturation or a little bit more contrast. You can move it around just as you want as an image and you can move it around for having different directions of shadows. When you separate those things and say these um, area light HDRI is not visible as background. So where's now this background? It's in the render settings and under environment there we have um, background environment and there is the same construction it's also a filter and it's uh, coming along with a the same image in this case and when you click on this it's also in color profile srgb mode and it's looking very dark this so but this is correct and you have the same uh, set of parameters to tune it okay so this is where you basically set up your background image of course, um, as I did it, it's just the same image. It's just, you know, it gives me the ability to just treat them a little bit separately and having more color in the background and less color in the light, HDRI and stuff like that. So, um, now, this is um, somehow annoying. You have to, you know, go to the render settings, to the environment tab in the render settings and do something here. Here it's multiplier in 150 and in the light tag its intensity very important option and then again we have enabled shadows which is important too so 
as you can see, some very crucial parameters are spread all over the place, and there's a lot of stuff in between, which is not that important and not that often used in uh, all-day rendering. So, uh, what I wanted to do is to have a set, a concentrated set of parameters you really need when you play around with a V-Ray dome, uh, HDRI dome light. So, what I did, I just try to configure. Um, a user set of um, really important parameters. So what I did, I put this um, array light into a null called this V-Ray HDRI dome and as you can see it has a basic tab, a coordinates tab, an object tab which is uh, what you see uh, always when you have an object like this and then I added a new tab and this is called HDRI dome. And in this HDRI dome, you see all the parameters which are really, really important when playing around with these um, area lights. And I just configured it that way that you have a very small set of parameters you might want to deal with. So, first of all, we can switch on shadows. Um, it's switched on by default. You can check invisible. So. The HDR highlight is not caring for the background image. Intensity can be set here. Rotation. This is not the rotation of the V-Ray tag or something. It's just the rotation of the light source, the Cinema 4D light source. So you can turn around this light object and have different kinds of um, light distribution and, of course, shadow directions. We'll try it out later on. You can set the subdivisions. It's, uh, by default, it's 8. The V-Ray guy says it uh, should be 64, so you can always, you know, play around with these sliders. And then, what is very important, you can use texture. This is also on by default, and also by default, we have already a texture. So, as you could see, there was a sky with uh, some clouds, and this is a free sample of um, this Dutch Skies um, firm. They give it away for free. They sell a lot of them and they give some away for free. Um, I give you the link in the text below this video so you can look for it too. And I hope these guys are you know, satisfied with me using this in this case because it's, um, I thought it a good idea to just have one HDRI image uh, to start with. So this is put in here. And of course you can choose other images too. And I will show you later on how you can uh, play around with this. Texture mapping is set to spherical by default. Color profile is set to sRGB, which is crucial, also by default. Okay, so then again, you can play around with the color uh, parameters. The most important, as I think, is hue, saturation, contrast, and this is all for the HDRI setup. And compare this again to uh, what you have here. Common tab, some parameter here, some parameter here. Area light, some parameter here. Um, choosing the texture and inside the filter you can have hue saturation and contrast. Okay, so this is all concentrated in this um, small area. And again, there was this other parameter, arch H, the rotation of the original light source. This is also integrated, you know, this is rotation. So, this is for the HDRI part of my light source. And in case you don't want it as a background image, there is this other set of parameters dealing with uh, things inside the render settings. So as I showed you, when you hit Command B, you have this environment section and you can choose a background image and it's the same, I told you before, it's the same as in my HDRI setup. And there is a multiplier, there's a mapping too, there is an offset, you can turn this background image just right here, you don't have to turn around something else. So, uh, put this all into these, you know, small departments, background image, texture mapping, color profile, intensity, rotation, and again, hue, saturation, and contrast. So, let's play around with it. As you can see, I was rendering in the picture view. So, by default, I set my saturation of this lighting to minus 25. So, when you take zero, as should be the default, and you hit render, you will see that the blue sky is coloring the white, more or less white surfaces of the objects rather strongly. So I reduced it to a default value. 
By the way, you can always right-click on any of these parameters and choose Reset to Default, and it's set to My Defaults. I will show you later on how you can change this in case your computer, your screen, is doing something different than mine does, so you can have your own default values. But this is what I did. Right-click on it and say Default, Set to Default. Okay. So then the intensity, you can push it up to something much more, have it rendered again, and as you can see, the image becomes much more lighter, brighter, but only the real geometry, because this, as you might know already, is the background image. This is kept care of um, separately, so this is not affected, but the scene, of course, gets much lighter. I set this back to the default value of 200. So now um, <clears throat> have a look at the shadow, it's going in this direction. You can change the rotation, let's say 180, and have it rendered again. And as you will see, the shadow is coming in the other direction. So this is because the dynamic range of this HDRI image is responsible for the cast shadows. The stronger the contrast and um, the lighter the light parts, the stronger the shadow will be. So this is, of course, rather nice, I think. Okay, so you have to play around. You don't see this in the viewport. You can do what you want. You won't ever see something. But again, we have a default. We can set it back to the default and stay with this. Okay, <clears throat> so what else could I show you? I could show you something. You can change the hue. Let's change it rather dramatically. Now, this is rather gray, grayish white. And when you render again, you will see that this color is changing. Okay, this is hue. You might have expected that. And the contrast, too, you can crank it up to, let's say, 50. And let's have it rendered again. Yeah. Don't wait upon this. And you can see it's getting darker and it's more contrast. This was the original image, and this is the contrast. You can see this is much more shadow. Of course, you would have to screw up the intensity again to, you know, have it a little bit more in the white direction again. So, I think this is quite comfortable. Let's take contrast back to its default. And now to our background image. Okay, this is not really very much of a difference. Um, just keep in mind how the clouds are situated and you don't see anything like, you know, buildings and stuff like that. And when I turn this around, let's say 480 degrees and have it rendered again, you will see that this is getting lighter again, not because I turned the background around, this is just because I put the contrast back to null but you see, the background image has rotated, okay? So, I think this might suit you and might suit me, too. And again, we can do something about saturation, contrast, and hue for the background image. So, um, well, basically, this is it. And I promised you to show how to, you know, change default values. Let's say your computer screen is just lighter or brighter or darker than mine, or the color scheme is different, or the kind of HDRI maps you use is quite different, and you don't, for example, you don't need a saturation going down to minus 24, 25%, you can change this. And where is this done? Um, we have a menu in the Attributes Manager, and there's one, it's called User Data, and basically what I did here, I configured User Data. So, I can go to this um, menu, check Manage User Data, and here you see all those items listed up here, and for example, let's take the saturation, saturation is minus 25, and it's somewhere, somewhere here. These are the separators, the headlines, by the way, you can change the headlines if you want. Of course, you can change everything, <laughs> and saturation is here. So, the default value is minus 25, so of course you can change it, let's say to null. And when I 
right click on saturation now and say reset to default it's set to null okay so this is it but i want to have it minus 25 again so this is basically it you can change the default values just as you wish okay and as I said in the beginning, this was all meant to just make life easier. You know, you have a concentrated set of parameters and you don't have to, you know, click around tabs and things and, and keep in mind what is to be done in the render settings, what is to be done in the light tab and what is done in the, to be done perhaps in the camera tag or somewhere else. So um, you don't have to do this um, in case you just don't need no more parameters than these. Of course, you can always go to the original V-Ray light tag and do something very special like, <clears throat> you know, texture resolution or something like that. And again, you can also um, go to the render settings and do something um, more specific. Um, but again, I think most of you and me, for example, we just need something like this. So, um, and there is a very important thing belonging just to this, and I would like to show you how to exchange the HDRIs. Let's say you have a set of HDRIs collected somehow um, in your content browser. This is, of course, the easiest way. You can just, let's say you want to have these, um, hmm, hmm, what is, they're not that good, actually, because of, um, you know, I didn't buy too many. These are free stuff, free samples. Let's take this one. I want to have this one and I just drag it to the texture slot and here we are. Okay, and if I want to do the same for the background image, I can just put this there and here we are again. So when I hit render, of course, um, might be that intensity is just too high now. That looks a little bit too light. So we can easily crank down intensity for the background image. This is one thing. I will blend it again. You see how fast this is going. Yeah? You don't have to, you know, open your render settings and stuff. So, and this is too light, too bright, too. Let's put this down to 125 or something. I'm very fond of uh, values like 25, 50, and so on. Which might be not that professional. So. As you can see, it's rather easily done. You do some things and then you get your results. Very quick. Okie doke. So this is basically it. I would like to give this away because I did this for me. I'm um, testing our V-Ray for a building to render certain interiors and exteriors and I just didn't want to, you know, waste my time with uh, fiddling around with parameters here and there, so I wanted to have this kind of setup. And I have to give credit to Chris Schmidt and um, Nick Kempel from Grayscale Gorilla because they gave me this idea to how to easily handle Expresso, because when you see an Expresso tag like this, it looks a little bit complicated, and in fact you have to keep your, you know, keep concentrated when doing this. It's not that difficult as it might look, but then again, it's uh, it's somewhat tricky, okay? So, um, but in fact, it worked. But mind you, I'm not a programmer, so in case you find something that doesn't work, just tell me. Sometimes you have to do something. Uh, this, uh, I would like to put it last. Uh, when you change something in your HDRI dome settings, in my new user-defined settings, user data settings, um, it's not, you know, um, refreshed at, um, at once in the original settings. So you have to do something sometimes. You have to do something like moving something or, you know, doing just something in the scene and then um, it's updated in the original settings location. So now, for example, we have 125 in my user data. Let's have a look at the common tab. So here it's 125 too, so it works. Hope it works for you too. Thanks you very much and hope you like it and make good use of it. Bye.